This is a regular uh, TO-3 case style power transistor, okay, uh, NTE-130, <clears throat> pretty beefy, and uh, as you can see it's got uh, two pins on the bottom there, and the case itself is uh, metal, uh, is, is the actual, uh, is the third pin of this transistor. Before I show you how to uh, determine what pin is what, uh, I want to show you on the meter here. I've got my meter set up for uh, diode check because the junctions of the transistors between base emitter, base collector, that's what they are, they're diodes. Uh, so what you're doing is you're checking for diode drop, okay, voltage drop. Uh, now, <clears throat> I've got my two leads here. They're both white, but um, I've got them marked. You can see this one here is positive. And that goes to the red lead of my meter. Uh, the negative one goes to the black lead, okay, and <clears throat> you'll see here that if I short them out, the meter will go to zero, it's because I got it shorted, okay. Now, <clears throat> to check for transistor pinouts is very simple. You take the, any one of the, of the uh, meter leads, doesn't matter which, black or red, positive or negative, and you just select any pin of a transistor. Okay, I'm going to select that one. I'm going to leave it there. Take the other, the other lead and touch the other pin. The meter shows the voltage drop, 435, 0.435. Then you take that same negative wire, touch the third pin, and I'm getting another reading, 432. Okay, so automatically that tells me two things. Number one. The transistor so far is good because I've got two readings. The third thing it tells me, second thing it tells me, is that this pin that I have the positive connected to is the base, okay? Because the base controls both the emitter and the collector. So I'm supposed to get two readings. And actually it tells me a third thing. The third thing it also tells me is that this transistor is an NPN. Why is it an NPN? Because the base requires to be more positive than the other two leads, the other two pins. And because I've got positive on this pin, that tells me that this transistor is NPN, okay? And if it was PNP, I would get two readings with negative on this pin, on the base. So, so far, I have found that the transistor is NPN, and I have found my base lead, okay? So I'll do that again. With positive on this, on this pin, I touch the other pin, I get 433. I touch the other pin, the case, and I get 431. Now, <clears throat> you can alternate these wires. You can move this. You can move the first, the positive lead over to the second pin. Touch the first pin with the negative. You should get what I'm getting, zero, or no, no reading whatsoever. Okay, that indicates that the transistor is not shorted. And then with this negative pin, touch the case again. You should get nothing. Okay, now you can take the positive and connect it to the case, touch the first pin, and again, you should get nothing. And touch the second pin, and you should get nothing whatsoever. So I just checked this transistor six different ways, and I've got only two readings. I've got two readings by putting positive on this pin, and I touch the second pin, I get a reading, and I touch the third pin, and I get another reading. Okay, so there's my two readings. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for two readings only. Anything less, the transistor is no good. Anything more, the transistor is no good. All right? Now, the fact that I have positive on this pin, again, indicates two things. That the transistor is good, because I'm getting two readings, and also because positive on this pin is telling me that that pin is the base lead. Okay? Now, how do I find that which of these two remaining pins is collector emitter? Very easy. Watch the first reading. The first reading on my meter is 433. Okay, now keep that reading in mind, 433. If I remove that and touch the case, I'm getting 430, 430. Again, the first pin, 433. The second pin, 430. Okay, what does that tell me? That tells me that the first pin is the emitter. Why? Because the base emitter is always a higher reading than the base and collector. Okay, that's the trick. 
So you don't need any transistor testers or anything like that. All you got to do is look at your multimeter. Now I know the voltage difference is very, very slight. It's on the order of 0 0.002, 0 0.003 volts. But nevertheless, it's there. Okay, again, I'll do it again. 4, 433 on the emitter and 430 on the collector. So it's 0 0.003 less on the collector, okay? And that's the trick. The trick is that the base emitter will always be higher than the base collector. So it's easily found. You can easily find the the emitter and collector. What you're looking for is the highest reading between base between the base and the emitter. Okay? Right now I've got four okay, it's come back to four thirty three and the collector four thirty one. 430. It doesn't matter what the reading is as long as you get that difference, all right? Now, <clears throat> that's for this type of transistor. Let's go to another type of transistor. This type of transistor. This is very, very tiny. It's an MTE199, right? And it's got three wires on it. Uh, very hard to see there, but uh, I think it's hard to see. But there's the three wires, okay? And you don't know which one is which. I'm going to start with the center wire. Let's start with the center wire right there. I put positive on the center wire. All right? Now, I touch the first wire. I get 601, 602. I touch the second wire. I get 609, 610. All right? So, again, that tells me three things. Number one, I got two readings. That means that this pin I have it connected to is a base. I've already found the base. I've also found that this transistor is NPN. Why? Because I've got positive on the base. You see? Positive. So, I found my base lead. I know it's an NPN. And now I need to find out collector emitter. Which one is of the remaining two pins is collector emitter? Well, if I leave the positive on the base, I will touch this wire again, this pin. And what's my reading? Uh, 0 0.600. If I touch the third pin, what is my reading? 0 0.608. You see, so this pin right here, this second pin that I'm touching is the emitter. Okay, the first one is the collector. Very easy. Why? Be again, because the emitter, the base and emitter will always be higher than the base and collector. All right? Now, <clears throat> so far I've, I have checked two different types of transistors, and these are... Uh, both NPN, but the same exact thing applies to PNP. In PNP, instead of the positive being on the base, the negative lead, the negative lead would be on the base. When you touch the positive to the other two pins, you will get two readings. Okay? So that's how you check transistors with, uh, with a simple multimeter. That's how you determine collector emitter of transistors with the multimeter. So basically what you're doing is you're looking for two readings only between all the three pins. It doesn't matter which way you connect the wires, okay? And I will state it again. If you get one, two, if you get one reading or, or no readings, the transistor is no good. If you get more than two readings in any way that you connect the wires, then the transistor, again, is no good, all right? You're only supposed to get two readings. And if you have positive on one of the pins where you get two readings like like this there's one reading there and one reading there okay but positive is the common wire then you know already that this is the base lead and this transistor is npn so with positive on the base the transistor is npn with negative on the base the transistor is pnp okay now <clears throat> and so let me do that one more time with positive on the base, because I know that this is the base lead and this is an NPN transistor, I touch the negative on this pin and I'm getting a reading 0 0.600. If I touch the other pin, I'm getting 0 0.608. Okay, so obviously this pin is higher than this pin. So that means that the higher pin, which is this one here, has to be the emitter. Okay, so when you look at this transistor, you would know that this is the collector the base and the emitter. There you go. That's how you find it. All right? A little trick of the trade.
And the same thing applies to PNP only in reverse. Now the only difference with PNP is that the numbers will be a little bit closer together. PNPs are much more, uh, they're actually easier to make than NPN and uh, the tolerances are much closer. Okay, so when you're measuring PNP, you will still measure a difference between base emitter, base collector, except that the difference will be somewhere around 0.001 Okay, the collector might, base collector might be somewhere around uh, 0 .60, uh, 0 0.600, the same as this one, and the emitter will be 0 0.601, okay? But even though it's that very slight difference, it still tells you which one is the emitter. So just remember, whether the transistor is NPN or PNP is irrelevant. What you're looking for, in order to determine if the transistor is good, is only two readings on the meter, no more and no less, and also you are looking for a difference in the voltage drop, okay? The, the two pins that have the higher voltage drop indicates which one is the emitter, okay? So base collector is lower than base emitter. Base emitter is always the higher reading. There you go, guys. Hope that helps everybody, and I uh, guess we'll catch you next time. Take care.